on one of the best women players in the world, Akane Yamaguchi, who's up next against Paiyu Po. Always a treat to watch Yamaguchi. Saw her play earlier in the week in the group match against England. She was absolutely terrific. Took down uh, Abigail Holden in straight games. Meanwhile, Pai Po is first out. The 30 year old. Just a delight to watch the speed that she shows around the court. Patience that she displays as well, but I gotta say that match against Holden, she was winning a lot of points in pretty short rallies. 5-1 in the head-to-head. -head. The match that the uh, Chinese Taipei woman won against Yamaguchi was way back in 2014. You probably disregard that in terms of a form indicator. So Pai Po, who's 13 hours, um, oh, it says 28 on there, maybe I've got her age wrong, I don't want to do her out of a couple of years, ranked at uh, 43, she's been as high as 20, that was April of 2018, so getting on for two and a half years ago. Started playing at nine, her first professional tournament was uh, when she was just 16, and her last tournament victory was a Super 100 event, the Russian Open in 2019. Just played the one match and she beat Yvonne Lee of Germany in an hour and ten minutes in three games. I think she is 30, I just double checked, so I don't want to be rude in case I've uh, done around in a couple of years, but she is 30. Yanaguchi is just 24, ranked five in the world. She was up at number one about two and a half years ago, twice a world junior champion. She's already got a Yuba Cup gold medal in her collection and a World Championship bronze and has not been extended so far as you can see there. There's that match against uh, Holden. Six major titles in the last three years, including the 2020 Thai Masters. Abdul Latif Jahari from Indonesia is the uh, chair umpire. And the service judge is from Serbia, Goran Yelisejevic. Ready to play.
So stand by for the player introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, on the right, Japan, represented by Akane Yamazuchi. And on my left, Chinese Taipei, represented by Pai Yuko. Japan to serve. Love the Play. Might be a tough ask this for Pai Ipo. Won't be asked to do a lot of running. Yamaguchi's great exponent using every square inch on the other side of the court. And that's a nice piece of early aggression though from Pai. Get caught Yamaguchi by surprise a little bit, the power of that shot. Well, it's a good lead in the end, very good judgment. Great speed again from Yamaguchi to get to that. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. It's almost balletic the way she moves around the court. And despite only being five foot one, great spring. And that was precision placement and power. Too much pay. On the line.
But she can't afford to make those kind of unforced errors. Gets Yamaguchi. Going to be under enough pressure from the Japanese without adding to the problem herself. There was a, a moment in that rally where Pei played a wonderful smash down the line and Yamaguchi got it back as if it was kind of a, a little training session. It must be demoralising when you play as good a shot as that and it comes back no problem. Marvellous again. Absolutely magnificent. Makes it look ridiculously easy. It was anything but. And she's raced into a 9 3 lead, the Japanese here. Well, the plan's working perfectly. Drawing her in, pushing her back. Well wide, and it's a one-sided opening to this uh, first game. 11-3 it is at the interval, and play with a uh, play with a lot of thinking to do here. Not sure how much wisdom the coach can impart in the space of a minute or so. Great chasing from Yanaguchi. How hard is Pai having to work? Try and win a point here. Oh, it must be totally demoralising for Pai at the moment. Just can't lay a glove on Yanaguchi.
So many of these shots, you could almost put the video in some kind of a the Babington Masterclass collection. That was good, I think. No, wrong side of the line. Thought fleetingly about a challenge, decided against it. But she's uh, rather being steamrolled at the moment. Well, that was the bite a bit, wasn't it? Perfect weight of shot from Pi. Well, it was right in the hitting zone. Still had to execute it and did that wonderfully well. And this is becoming a pretty one-sided opening game, truth to tell. Japan, though, remember, one love down in the tie. So important from a Japanese point of view that there's no let up from Yamaguchi. of apology for the net call but I, I don't think it's going to be hugely significant unless she can mount what would appear to be a very unlikely comeback here yeah just rather snatched at that I didn't try to hit too hard he's so eager to get there to the net Normal service restored. the drift just take that shuttle back towards the sideline and it started outside it and from right to left on your screen so moving inexorably and inevitably it would appear towards this opening game Akane Yamaguchi Well placed again.
just the wrong side of the line from Yanaguchi's point of view. No problem to put that away. And just a couple of points from clinching this uh, opening game, the Japanese. We're gonna have this down as a virtual banker, you'd have, think, you'd, you'd have thought, in the uh, Japanese camp. But you're still gonna win them. Well, that might make Pi feel a little better. Casual, maybe, but shouldn't matter. So, nine game points the Yanaguchi take down the opener here. Well, fitting way to clinch the opening game. Really impressive from the Japanese. And they are looking good here in this second game to level the match. Just 16 minutes it took her to uh, secure that first game. Well, worth having a look at the final point. There's that spring I was talking about. It really gets a lot of height. Just perfectly angles the racket head. Take the shuttle away from her opponent. So is there anything that Hayupo can do to stem the tide here? I've got to say it looks unlikely. And that again. This, she's taken out exactly where she left off.
That was a very death touch indeed. I think uh, Yamaguchi had been proud of that shot. But she needs to find that kind of an angle to win a point. That kind of semi-wonder shot, really. Again, running her opponent all round the court. Well, it seems as though the pie has come to a decision. She's going to go down. She's going to go down fighting here. Will be ultra aggressive try and finish the points quicker easy to say much harder to do against this woman especially when she plays shots like that absolutely brilliant again caught for a minute she might have had to play more of a, of a defensive shot to keep the point alive not a bit of it That's nice though. Yes, that was hit with real venom, with real purpose. It's almost as if Yamaguchi's thinking, okay, we're making more of a fight of it so far, I need to reassert again. That was nailed. Well, there is a little bit of drift, but that was never going to come back far enough. Well, first time that Pais had a two-point lead in either game. Can she capitalise on a good start here? Turn the match on its head if she can. <laughs> well, <laughs> wry smile from Pi as if to say, don't talk to me anymore. Bring her forward, push her back, bring her forward, push her back. It's almost like she was doing shuttle runs there at that point. Oh, lovely. And the fist pump tells you she is really up for this. I mean, no reason she wouldn't be, but having been sadly beaten in the first game, this is uh, much more like it from Poipo.
Well, I can see the intent. Not quite the execution that time. So from 8-5 down to 8-all, and the Gucci has uh, stemmed the tide here in game two. Hand of apology for the net cord that basically left Pai helpless. Coming relentless now, isn't it? Almost as if she's raised her own level, which is pretty high in any case. Maybe just dipped a fraction at the start of this game. Pi got herself a three point lead, but that's five points in a row for the Japanese. Make that six, and she's got a three point advantage as they go for the interval. So now or never really for Hoi Po, and that is going to help the cause. You can see Yamaguchi, strangely, her weight was going the other way and she was pretty much on the sideline. But that is marvellous placement again. Grace, artistry, fabulous technique. So quick around the court as well. Always drifting wide of the sideline. And now that gap on the scoreboard is becoming a serious concern for that woman. Yes, well played. One of the few rallies where Pai's had the upper hand, just out thought Yamaguchi there. Easy put away in the end.
<laughs> well, she's going to challenge it. It's called in. If, if the call was correct, this is just a super shot again. Because there wasn't a lot of margin for error where High was on the court. Maybe it's a shot it was. Again, it's almost like a penalty taker sending the goalkeeper the wrong way there. You know, Gucci was going to way to her left, the shuffle went in the other direction. There are moments when we've seen some classroom uh, play you po. You think she's never been ranked inside the top 20 in the world, 43 now. I don't think she's played particularly badly, to be fair, but come up against an uh, inspired Akana Yamaguchi. And her judgment's been spot on as well. For once, she's put it the wrong side of the line. The victory has been all but secure for a while. It just doesn't look to be, or hasn't looked to be, any way back for Pi. <laughs> it's an inventive attempt. And that excellent shot gives Yamaguchi seven match points. Something of a masterclass in just, what, 34 minutes on court, 21-13 in that second game and she brings Japan level in the tie, it's one match each now, following on from Li and Yang's victory for Chinese Taipei in the men's doubles. There's the confirmation, 21-11, 21-13.
no problem at all for Akane Yanaguchi. So she's done her bit. Is there a way for Chinese Taipei to come through in the tie now? Or do you think that Cho Tian Chen would have to beat Kento Momota with the other matches uh, to come? Let's have a look at the final point in what was, in truth, a pretty one-sided contest. And appropriate, it ended with High struggling after another excellent shot from Yamaguchi. Almost the match in microcosm, pushing her back. Keeping her on the back foot, literally. And then the killer blow. Well worth a high five. So up next, as mentioned, it's Kento Momota, the world number one, trying to give Japan the lead up against Cho Tian Chen. He's lost his last seven matches against Momota. Can he turn the tide? But a warm welcome back as we continue our coverage of the BWF Suderman Cup for 2021. And perfectly poised in this quarter final between Chinese Taipei and Japan. Yamaguchi bringing the Japanese level after Lee and Yang's victory in the men's doubles.